So last week Omega released the brand new 75th anniversary edition for all the Seamaster models which basically included a facelift adding a new doll called the Summer Blue Edition. So that was really nice and I think a lot of people really liked that. However, there was still an itch that needed to be scratched for me, that dream Seamaster that I wanted to see and so many others did as well, but we just didn't get to see it. So today I'm going to be creating that prototype and I'm going to be calling it the Rolex Killer. Let's jump into it. So before I jump fully into the video, would you take just a moment to subscribe to the channel because it would really help me get to my goal of a thousand subscribers. Right now I'm at 950, so if you subscribe right now, we'll probably be at thousands. Now before I jump fully into the video, let's do my wristwatch check and my drinks check. Starting off with the drinks check, shall we? I've actually got quite a rare whiskey in for today. This is the Dunhill Fine Whiskey. This is the Old Masters, this is from a large bottle and I think this is actually retailing for about 200 British pounds, so quite expensive stuff. I've never had this before, I've got it with some ice, let's give it a sip. I thought it was going to be really sort of musky and quite rich, but it's really quite mellow actually. Hmm. No, there's really no notes there at all. I thought there was going to be a lot of character coming through. It smells quite oaky, actually. It's, um, it's quite a nice smell. It's very pleasant drinking. There's not really a lot of uh, not a lot to complain about there at all. For my wristwatch check, I'm wearing my Longines Conquest Silver Dial on the bracelet. Really classic look. I really love this combination. And it goes well with the shirt today. So, um, yeah, that's going to be it. So let's jump into the video. So which Seamaster will I choose to use as my base model to then make the perfect Omega prototype? Well, I think it's going to have to be the 300M, personally. I just think it's the flagship and the one that is just most noticeable and recognisable. I love the Aquaterra, I love the Planet Ocean, the Heritage models are really nice as well. But for me, I think the 300M is the flagship out of all of them. So I'm going to use the 300M and then I'm going to modify it to make it more, well, I guess more appealing to the wider audience and something that's going to be therefore very very acceptable and very wearable. So first off I'm going to have to downsize it a bit because 42mm while it works quite alright for someone like me on my wrist but it's not going to work well for a lot of people so I'm going to downsize that to 39mm as well as slim it down a bit. Get the Seamaster on a diet and bring it down to 12.5mm in thickness just to make it a little bit more wearable. The next thing I'm going to do is change something very fundamental on the Seamaster. I'm going to remove the date complication entirely and basically have it so that it's just a seamless dial. I think that'll just look a lot better and just really clean up the dial. The next thing I'm going to do is add a slight burst effect to the dial and it's going to be in a teal green. So I basically have the summer blue version of the watch but slightly tinted to more of a green hue. I think that'd look absolutely amazing and really pop. And I mean, the green dial version of the Seamaster 300M has done so fantastically well. I think this would be an absolute perfect marriage between this and the summer blue. So you'd have the green mixed with that blue. It just would look fantastic. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is basic, but pretty effective in my eyes. Instead of having a printed on um, boring logo for the Seamaster line, like they some reason they, they do this already on the Aquaterra, but I'm going to have an applied metal logo put onto the new 300M because I just don't know why it's not already done. It's a really nice refinement that I think would add a lot of character and a lot of depth to the dial. So the next thing I'm going to do is something that a lot of people are going to thank me for, which is tapering the bracelet because the 300M's bracelet is really nice and really like great looking, but it just is a bit thick and it has no taper and I think a lot of people would appreciate a taper. So that's what I'm going to do, tapering the bracelet, that's going to please a lot of people. Now for the helium escape valve, I'm actually going to leave it on there because I think it is just a very recognizable feature and without it, the watch sort of looks a bit imbalanced. I don't think it looks quite right without it. So I'm going to keep the helium escape valve on. And that's it. That's all the modifications I'm going to be doing to the 300M. And I think this is an absolutely beautiful watch. Let me know down below what you think of the look of this watch and what else you would change. 
For the packaging, I think they should just keep the standard box or maybe even do a sort of brushed charcoal finish. That could look really cool on the wooden box. That would be really nice. Imagine opening that with a white leather interior and having this beautiful watch just sitting there waiting to be picked up. And for the price of this watch, so the current price is 5,500 as of today. And I reckon this would probably be good for about 5,000. 300 I'd say or maybe 5200 because it hasn't got the date complications so they could save a little money there so pricing it a little bit below I think would just attract so many people so let me know down below what do you think of this watch would you buy it yourself thank you so much for watching this video though goodbye